Kim, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm an avid listener of the podcast. So truly, it's an honor to be sitting with both of you. I'm totally inspired by your stories and the work you're doing in the world. So thank you so much. Uh, I can't tell you how delighted we are to have you here. You and I have met a number of times in person. You're based here in the Bay Area, and we've had some really great soul nourishing conversations. And I'm so excited to bring that to this conversation today. And I want to start with that really pivotal moment, because I know you had it all, Kim, you had it all on paper. And you had the career, you were climbing the corporate ladder, you were doing all the things you were, you were young in your career, and you were rising in the ranks, and making all these connections. But suddenly, things started to break down. And it led to this complete transformation in your journey. So take us back to that that time in your journey. What was happening in your life? And then how did you start to get those, um, those whispers, so to speak, that maybe this wasn't the right path for you? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, uh, I hope in my story that your listeners will hear and listen something to take away. Because I think, honestly, a lot of people are having these moments of following and pursuing one path only to reach that metaphorical mountaintop and suddenly it all needs to crumble and fall apart. And it's okay. It's beautiful Mm -hmm. if we let it crumble. So what happened to me, my goal and my vision for my entire career was to make it to running communications for a sports brand. And I did it. I reached my mountaintop. Um, I was about to get married. I was engaged to the love of my life. And we were pursuing the planning for getting our wedding all set. The other backdrop was the pandemic was happening. So there was a lot of time and soul introspection that was happening while simultaneously we were physically moving our life forward into the next chapter. And along the way, I had... I started to experience things in my body. I was waking up at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. I was unable to go back to sleep. This progressed into a series of panic attacks where really, truly, my body had been trying to get a hold of me for years. And then it resulted in, you're not paying attention. I'm going to shake you out of this life and think, force you to think about, is this really the path that you want to pursue? Because like you mentioned, on paper... I had everything that I ever wanted, but there was a big part of me that knew, and frankly, that my uh, my soul had been trying to get a hold of me for a long time. Of just because I was achieving external success, I wasn't feeling it internally. It wasn't actually my story to be living. So, when I say a lot of people probably experience this, we pursue these paths of maybe they were, they were the dreams that we hatched five years ago, ten years ago. Maybe they were someone else's story to begin with. But to me, this wake up was the result of a decade of introspective work that came to this head in this moment. So what ended up happening is I took a step back from said dream career that I had worked so hard for. I think I just devastated 26-year-old me who had been working and fighting so hard for this position. (laughs) And um, I got an Akashic Record reading. This was one of the spiritual practices that I had pursued as part of my path. And this is where the insight came about take a step back. So I did. And I went and got married. We went on our honeymoon. And that's where like the whispers really got loud. And the thing I want to underline here is it's often really inconvenient when this starts happening, like dismantling this, (laughs) dismantling all of this is not a convenient thing by any stretch of the imagination. But the message I got was to pursue understanding this practice of the Akashic Records more. And I had never even heard of it. It sounded like a very foreign term. Um, I had dabbled in astrology and mediumship and had gotten a yoga teacher certification. But this was the one that really spoke to me and catapulted me into getting a certification, which as part of the certification was really just my own personal growth and development to try to make sense of how could I have pursued a path that was so off course for me and where did that deviation happen um, to doing practice readings for people where I started cracking other people wide open in the same way that I had gotten cracked wide open. And ultimately I uh, got laid off from the corporate job that I went back to part t- part time after this journey. And my goodness, was your soul going, I became, no, 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 yeah. part time. <laughs> 
That's that exactly putting right. Your, your soul there. You got to come on, Kim, come over here. Yes, that's exactly right. And you know, like this is the other big part for people is it will keep talking if you keep listening and you just need to keep listening to what's there. So what happened is I became a mom. I launched a business with this practice. And so today here I am kind of synthesizing my communications background, um, Akashic working in the Akashic records and helping other people tune into their intuition to use for their work and their life. Um, and the, the crumbling kind of keeps happening. This is not something that, you know, it's one and done. This is a consistent practice of tapping into what's right for you individually. And the specificity of what's right for you and your life, I think is another really big thing to listen to. And the only way you're going to get there is if you slow down enough to hear it. And I think for me, I also didn't have the courage to let the worlds blend together. I was super concerned that I was in a very ambitious environment. I was working with top CEOs, you know, companies like Microsoft, Under Armour, Old Navy, uh, that felt like I actually might compromise my ambition and the vision that I had for my career if I start talking about things like I intuitively felt like. And so, really, what I started to do is presented things as here's the data when really it was laced with my intuitive knowing of like, this is what's right just because I can feel it in my heart. Mm -hmm. I can feel it in my mind. Um, And so for me, it was really about starting to gain the courage even to talk about this stuff. I kept my spiritual pursuits very separate from my corporate. I almost had two different identities that I would embody. I would go into the corporate world and Monday through Friday, I nine to five would or more because let's talk about the realities mm-hmm. of the corporate world. I I would be grinding and forcing and pushing and using this intellectual brain. And then I would go into nights or weekends and I would let myself feel into, huh, like this doesn't make a lot of sense. So really my path was about having the courage to own who I am. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a path that a lot of us are walking right now of understanding actually the unique tapestry that is all these different parts of us. If we learn to work with it is where the gift is. It's not about, you know, we're constantly looking outside of ourselves for the information, the validation. This is the playbook. This is the path to success. But if we can look inside and start pulling out like, oh, I have this intellectual mind that's fantastic. And has I have a lot of skills over here, but I also have this like intuitive ability. What if I marry the two? What if I start to apply creativity to my life and to my approach of, huh, I haven't seen this because we're all we all have these unique gifts and soul missions and soul purposes that are embedded in us. And I really truly believe one of the biggest things that we're supposed to do while we're here is to go find it and to live into it. And sometimes that takes going down meandering paths to get the tools that we need to then pull it out of us to understand that this is, this is the way is living into it. Yeah. I like that you were just like, I've tried it all. What else is there? Come on. Like, and then, and that's kind of where you landed there. I think that when I looked up um, a little bit more before you did my recording, my reading, I was like, okay, tell me a little bit more about Akashic. And one of the things that I, I saw was like, well, you've probably heard of karma, right? Karma is something that's really hard to put data behind. You know, it's, it's a feeling, it's a thing. Well, the Akashic records, like very kind of similar. And that helped me to build a bridge. Like, oh, this is just kind of another interpretation of the energy that's being exchanged. Our stories, our histories, our souls, our spirits, all of these things that are really hard to point down and pin down. Um, but, and, but by you bringing in the words practical and data, you know, provided and, and that this isn't the, the fix-all scenario. This isn't a fortune-telling method. It actually brings it down into a little bit more of reality in that that's kind of what the soul feels like to me. It's, it's a reading in the moment and it's interpretation of a lifetime of activities and interactions. And so if, if I can glean any insight in there as far as connections and moments and what things have to do right now that I can't see personally, I haven't been able to kind of build that inner knowing up to that ability. It feels like it's an amazing resource to just kind of be brought into that. If someone is willing to open themselves up to it, if they're willing to say like, yes, let's try this, let's try one more thing and and see if it will work. So I think the listener can really like 
you know, there's a lot of options out there and we would, we would encourage you to explore many of them to get to know yourself a little bit more, to be able to hone your life and your money, therefore, into the direction that you kind of envision for you and your family. And, um, and so this is a great one, one that specifically, so you just provided my recording just in the past week. Um, and I was really blown away by it. You and I have never spoken in person before. I hope that we do get a meet in person sometime, but it was really amazing to just like feel so seen and heard by what you were giving me in that, like, oh, yep, yep. I kind of sensed that I sensed all these things. And it was like, you were helping me to, to affirm my inner knowing a little bit because it, Nothing in there was just like so shocking off the charts, but it was like, oh, yep, you're right. I've been avoiding that. I've been, I've been dancing around that. And, and for you to kind of have brought that out in me was just, it felt, I don't know. I felt like I got to know myself better and that wasn't expected. Mm, that's amazing. I love that outcome. Like ultimately, I think we all need to use discernment with these tools that we're going and investigating and trying. And ultimately you have to put it through the filter of what feels right for you and what is right for you. And I love what you said about the data. So if you look up a lot of the famous business leaders and just world leaders throughout history, they talk about using some kind of spiritual practice or practice to connect with their intuition. And I think as the world continues to advance and we're getting all these new amazing technological tools like AI and all this data is right at our fingertips, it's on us that we need to upgrade our human technology and our human discernment to be able to filter through what feels right for me, because it would become very easy to outsource and to not drop me into that level of specificity of what you came here to do and what feels right. And feeling is really one of the biggest things that I want to help people to reclaim because your feelings are 1 million percent valid. They want a million percent belong in the boardroom and in our homes because they're our light source. That's not to be taken as just direct truth. You need to put them through the filter of your mind, but this practice really does bridge intuition and intellect so you can move in the world in the way that feels right for you. I love that upgrade your human technology. That's really good. Yeah. To meet life where it's taking you and and all these this this advancements. You can't, I mean, you can't just operate with the same hardware that you have been, you know, you've got to find new tools as you have. Um, can I ask one other curiosity question that maybe the listener has as well? Um, but so you did my Akashic Records reading in person in my home. You did Susan's asynchronously. You had never met Susan in person and you did an asynchronous recording for her. How is that possible? How does it work? And how, I mean, how is it possible that you can span distances and having never met somebody and get, give them a reading that's so spot on that it makes meaningful difference in their life? I know that the listener is going to have more questions. Hopefully they'll consider doing an Akashic Records reading with you and I know you do so much more than that too. So maybe they'll reach out with other questions and consider working with you. So tell them if they did want to follow up with you and learn more, what's the best place that they can go? Yeah. The, and again, thank you so much for having me. It's this, the story of our relationship and really getting the opportunity to meet both of you and to work in the records together. It's yeah. That's like the stuff of magic of following the nudges. And you never know what's going to happen when you follow, follow the voice. <laughs> So uh, the best place to reach me is my website. It's kimkenevil.com. Um, I also have a sub stack where I go into all things purpose and meaning and building a life that feels right for you. So I'd invite you to follow along. That's a free uh, resource just to dive into these kind of conversations. I find myself all the time craving community that wants to go there. So please, even if you're just curious to know more about the Akashic Records or you're in your own journey of wanting to connect with yourself and don't know where to start, I would be so honored to support you in that. 